safeguard your spirit. And in my studies, he took me to Philippians, the third chapter. Philippians, the third chapter. And thank God for my wife and my family Amen. and loved ones and our children. Amen. Extended family, my mother and grandmother who are here. Remember uh, my brother down south now with his family and all the extended family that's been mentioned, both yours and mine. For we all must learn to safeguard our spirit, for things are yet still to come. So as you're turning to Philippians, the third chapter, I'm going to go over safeguard, the word safeguard, and the word spirit. And from our uh, Meridian Dictionary, the word safeguard is something that provides protection against possible loss, damage, etc. It is a pass or safe conduct, a convoy or an escort, a precautionary measure, a stipulation or a device a technical contrivance to prevent accident. As we heard our Minister West's prayerful cry for these children, this is why we have lifeguards and there are certain safeguards you must put in place if you have pools and barriers of that type so that these young children can get. Now it's not to fault anybody, it's just this is what is in our in our land today. These are the types of things that people are doing and you know there are people who are, are looking even when the children were out playing yesterday you saw the parents just looking walking around looking you know and you knew what they were doing you know they weren't looking at some kid they were looking at them for protection for covering and these are things that uh, kind of confirm my thoughts and my thinking even yesterday that we have to safeguard our spirit. So if we have to safeguard our spirit, what is your spirit? The Bible records in Genesis 2, 7, it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. The Bible also records in Ecclesiastes 12, 7, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. So that tells me that our spirit is on loan. Amen. And that one day our spirit will have to return back to God. Amen. But our soul is eternal as God had intended it. Whether we realize it or not, right now, at this present time, in this present place, we are all eternal. Amen. We are just now physically inhibited by the fleshly body. Amen. So Paul began to talk to Philippians, to the church at Philipp Philippi, and told the Philippians, he says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. He says, to write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not a grievous thing. But for you, it is what? Safe. It's one thing to give instruction over and over again, not to be overburdensome, but to help people to be safe. When you have instructions to follow, they're there as safeguards for you to do. Whether you buy a toy for a child, you open up the instructions. For those of us who read the instructions, the first few pages are all about precautions. When you buy a new appliance, they want to say to prevent electrocution, follow these precautions. Follow these safeguards. It's the same way in the world, so it is with our soul, that we must follow certain precautions to safeguard our spirit. And one of the precautions he begins to say, he says, beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of concision. 
We need to safeguard our souls from demonic activity that seeks to make our Christly witness of none effect. Now, they come to seek out the work of God being performed, being prepared, being stoked in our lives so that they can cause an abortion of what God is about to birth in you. Some of y'all, if not all of y'all, are pregnant. Oh, God, in the spirit. And you have to safeguard your room. It is not by coincidence the devil is attacking now and not next week. We have to safeguard our spirit from all demonic activity. God is trying to build something in the church in the last days. For we are about to go to war. Policies are changing. People are selling out. Parents who used to be stern about the word of God, about homosexuality, now they yield to their children. And the Bible says, woe when a child has ruled over you. Remember that the devil can discern holiness. If you don't believe me, you read the, 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 you know, the harmonizing of the Gospels. And every time Jesus was minding his business, some devil ran up and says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He'll discern it. And he'll try every tactic from every angle to draw your focus off of Christ and onto people's trouble. That they should be saving from mama. Right? To cause you to stumble. You have to understand. The reason why they want you to get upset because they want you to say something. And there are people who shake your hand and then they scout on you. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Every time you come around. Every time he's in town. I'm telling you, saints, I caught him. We had some meeting going on. Y'all don't know him. Don't worry about it. And abruptly, he left the meeting and went to walk out. And something in my spirit said, follow so I went another route. Sometimes a young prophet has got to go, God, a different route. I said, huh, something didn't feel right when he left. Now he reports to me. Because some people don't like it when God promotes you. And something in my spirit says, see, he's going to say something going to start, because some people have to put files together about you, you know. Uh-huh. And he went another way, and I about to go out the door, and the Spirit of God said, wait. Now go. Give him time to turn that corner. So I went another route, a shortcut. You know, it's good to know the shortcuts. And I went through the shortcut through the cafeteria. Came up the cafeteria. And you know, sometimes, you know, like David, you gotta act like you don't know what you're doing. Oh. You walk around. Yeah. Corner of my eye, I see him coming. And I saw the look on his face. Like, whoop. Mm -hmm. Safeguard your spirit. Devilment in the workplaces. Devilment everywhere. And don't put it past people. If you can think if God has have you drawn on something, something is brutal. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. Don't be like, oh no, it's just a figment of my imagination. No, it's not. Right. The Holy Ghost is trying to tell you to safeguard your spirit. People like to hover. They like to sit around you to see if they can spot your terminal. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. 
They like to sit behind you and try to look over your shoulder. Ain't nothing nasty on the screen. Don't worry about it. Because while you're busy watching me, God is watching you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. See, 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 people, people don't know. And sometimes you tell them you scare them. I told this one brother, look now, when you come here, you better be careful of X, Y, and Z, one, two, three. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's okay. Go ahead. All right. A couple months later, I said, okay, give it a while. A couple months later, came back, Delhi, you know, uh, I said, I told you, didn't I? I said, one thing you don't you need to know about me. Number one, I ain't got no time to play games with people. And number two, I don't give nobody no foolishness. You can leave me alone, that's okay. But you won't get no foolishness from me. And see, when people like to play games, and act like you don't see or can't hear. Because there's people, see, you have to understand, the people of God walk with witnesses. We are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses that when they busy telling on you, the witnesses are telling on them. Safeguard, safeguard, safeguard my spirit. They want you to act out of character. They have to put some kind of blame on you. The reason why they were mad at Daniel, they could not find fault in him. All right, we'll get him. How can we get that, brother? How can we get, oh, you know what? You know she likes to pray, right? You know they talk about Jesus in the emails, right? You know he ain't supposed to be doing no Jesus talk and no religion up in here, right? We'll get him that way. It's a dangerous thing to be plotting against a man or woman of God. It's a dangerous thing. Because when God starts showing you dreams and visions, you got to be careful. You'll scare people to death. Oh, 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 oh. Safeguard your spirit. Peter told the church, don't render evil for evil. Or railing for real. Don't get no argument with them. Don't get no argument. They try to, you know, you know, people, you, you, know, you know what a cryptic email is? You don't know, look, let me tell you. A cryptic email is like bait. They put a little sarcastic email out there, boy. And they want to see if you're going to bite. See if you're going to answer. Because you know what they're doing with that email. They archive it and give it to a director or two. I'm not no conspiracy theorist, y'all. I'm just sharing. I'm trying to help. I'm trying to help the people of God. There are people who are conniving. There are devils that hate you because of the name of Jesus. fret. See, once you've been through some things after a while, you really don't fret no more. Because I've learned to know who God is. I went beyond belief. I know now how it's going to turn out. Why? Right? God already showed me what he's going to do to you. He already showed me what he will do to you. Ah, oh, Lord. Ah, oh, Lord. Safeguard your spirit, saints. Safeguard your spirit. Don't get caught up in people's foolishness. We have to be careful that we get caught up in other people's drama and therefore we find ourselves condemned. All because we're in a cloud of mess. And God will not, he will not, he will not bless mess. He will not do it. He says, but contrarywise, knowing that you are there unto call, that you should inherit a blessing. Paul was, he was telling some of the saints this now. I mean, Peter, excuse me. 
The reason why the enemy wants you to act up and trip up is so you can abort that blessing. The devil's trying to abort some people. Trying to abort some anointings. He's trying to do it. Just like in the natural. When a woman decides to have an abortion, she don't wait till she's about to deliver. She goes early. So the enemy does the same thing. When he hears that you're pregnant, when he hears that you're pregnant, that you have conceived something that God has put in you, and now it's time to nurture what's growing inside your spirit, the enemy tries to come just like an abortion clinic early in the time first trimester to mess up what you got. Because he knows that God's about to burst something out of you. But you must go through your labor period. We must go through our gestation. We must go through the growing times. We have to go through the sickness times. We have to go through the struggle times. But when you are delivered, all the pain, all the foolishness, you don't forget about it. But it no longer binds you. Peter said, for he that will love life and see good days, if you want to have a decent life, let him for refrain his tongue from evil. Stop talking about people. I know it's tempting. I'm going to say it for you. Don't worry about it. I know it's tempting to talk about people, especially when you know you're right. It's a, a strong temptation. But he said, refrain your tongue from evil. That person's lips will have no deceit, no guile. We have to learn these things. It's part of being safeguarding of your spirit. You have to issue or hate. If you're going to hate anything, hate evil. And do good. If you want good days, if you want God to bless you, you have to seek out, look out for peace. Sometimes looking out for peace means you don't stay at your cubicle during lunchtime because all you're going to hear is a bunch of mess and dirty jokes. Go to your car. Amen. Go drive. Amen. Where you go every time? Don't worry about it. That's my time. Don't worry about it. Because then they're going to follow you. Lord have mercy. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So Paul reminds us in verse 3 of our text. He says, for we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Jesus Christ. Jesus the anointed and have no confidence in the flesh. People who are scheming and plotting, plotting and scheming, they're trusting their boss man, they're trusting their cohort, they're trusting a child, but my confidence comes in the God of heaven who is able, so you gotta be careful when you pray. You gotta be careful when you pray. Because if God is your prayer, like he is in my prayer, my God, be careful. Then you got to be like, you know, Lord have mercy. You got to learn how to get some humility and some compassion in there. Because some of y'all pray some fiery prayers. But Lord, don't kill them. All right. All right. Lord, don't kill them. Just, you know, you know. You know, fix them till their heart come right. <laughs> fix them till they learn every their way. But Lord, don't kill them. Have mercy on them. Because God answers some of y'all prayers. Oh, Lord. I'm going to tell on my mama. I might still, <laughs> she might still get a prayer on me. But she used to pray them prayers. Lord, don't give them no peace. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Mama, mama, mama. Mama, wait. Don't give him no good. 
Don't give them no rest. Wait, mama, I need to go to work. Mama! Mama, wait! Lord, have mercy. Don't give them no peace, no rest. No. Lord, have mercy. What kind of prayer is that? It's a prayer of love. It's a prayer of love. Can I say that and not get whooped? Can I say that and not get whooped? The first lesson learned in your walk with Jesus Christ is that you are no longer of your own, nor are you governed by your own will. But your desire has to develop to do God's will on earth. This is what it means to be a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. This is very important because anyone who puts their confidence in the flesh, that means even when you upset, don't be trying to find no psychologist. Sometimes you gotta keep things from your own wife or husband. You hear what I'm saying? Now I'm not saying husbands and wives don't pray together, but when God is dealing with you on something. So remember that Satan was cast out of heaven. And God says, woe unto the inhabitants of the world. For Satan has come down with great wrath. Okay, remember that. Now, he was cast down to the earth. The Bible says at this moment in time, he is still the prince and power of the air. So when you speak something into the atmosphere, prematurely, the devil gets wind of it. Jesus said, when you pray, go in your secret closet. Now, we also have a prayer partner. But what I'm trying to explain is strategic prayer. Strategic. Even the president, before he makes a plan, he doesn't inform the generals yet. They come and tell him about a situation in the country or somewhere else, right? But his decision making is in chambers. Does that make sense now? Yes. Then when God gives you a clear signal, honey, baby, come pray with me. Come on, let's pray Satan's kingdom down. Come on. Something's going on with our baby girl. Something's going on with our son. Something's going on with mama. Come on. Does that, does that make sense? We're trying to safeguard our spirit. Because that's why, if you remember when Jesus was ministering, what did he tell people after he delivered them? Go and tell no man. Why would Jesus say that? For my time is not yet. There are some things, I'm talking about a personal level now. I'm talking about a personal walk with Christ. It begins personal now. Well, I have to be sure about something. Mm -hmm. There are some things we know now in Scripture that had to wait till after the resurrection. Jesus says, don't even tell the other disciples yet. It's very important that you don't put your trust in flesh. The Bible says in Proverbs 25, 19, confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot that's out of joint. Jeremiah put it another way. When God told him, thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm, whose heart departs from the Lord. 
For he shall be like the heath in the desert, Amen. and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. My God, you want to talk about dry and hot. Now, y'all y'all been around the past couple days now. And I saw a few people out there jumping in and hollering and screaming in water. I won't tell on nobody. I won't tell on nobody. That's what it's like when you don't put your trust in God, but you put your trust in men. You're like walking in a desert, I mean, no moisture. Parched. Your lips are cracked. Your, your, your tongue feels like cardboard in your mouth. That's what it means when you don't safeguard your spirit. He says, blessed is a man that trusts in God, whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when the heat comes, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought. When trouble comes, you ain't got to worry about it. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful. Listen now. Man's heart is deceitful above everything. And not only that, it's desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. Even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. God had to instruct his people on this because some people place their trust and hope on material things and people of the world. If you do these things, if you know anyone else who is doing these things, you have to share this important fact that they will put a curse on themselves. You have to safeguard your spirit. Some people put their trust in a candidate or the economy or the military or even in past times long gone. However, Paul placed these things into perspective. He says in verse 4, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, because even Paul says, you know, sometimes I brag a little myself. If any man thinks that he has will, he might trust in the flesh, I more. Right? And he goes down the litany. He says, I was circumcised on the eighth day. I was of the stock of Israel. I was of the tribe of Benjamin. I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. As touched the law, I study. I'm like a Pharisee. Concerning zeal, I persecuted the church. Touching the righteous, which is in the law. Blameless. Don't come to me about no scripture. He said, I'll quote scripture with you day in, day out. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost or useless for Christ. Yea, doubtless, or no doubt, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Amen. Just to know him a little better, Amen. I'm willing to give up my plans. Amen. I'm willing to put down that degree. Amen. I'm willing to give up my Saturday. I'm willing to come out on worship day just to know him a little better. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. When you're willing to lose friendships, people's respect, people's accolades, people's love, to get closer to Jesus Christ. Amen. To strive closer Amen. to God Almighty. Amen. To understand the Holy Ghost Amen. a little bit more clear. 
Sarah. I count them as dung, he says, that I might win Jesus Christ. Nothing in the world is compared to the knowledge of God. Nothing in the world is compared to the knowledge of God. He says in verse 9, I want to be found in him. Not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God by faith. When Paul was amongst the barbarians, he says these people never even heard the law. Yet, they conduct themselves as having the law already written on the table of their heart. We have to be careful that we must put things in right perspective when it comes to our walk with God. That we may safeguard our spirit from false accusation and falsehood of thought. That we may be clear in our goal towards Christ. James said every good gift and perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. In other words, do you know what variableness is? A variable. Some of y'all remember variables from algebra. Some of you remember variables from other portions of your life, but when you're dealing with something that has a variableness, it, it, it means it may operate this way, may operate that way, may go this way, may go, we call that variation. In engineering, we study variation. We try to limit variation as much as possible so that things can be repeatable. Right? Places that people eat study variation very closely. Because if someone ordered a number two, you better make sure they get a number two. Large, if you please. Because you've seen people when their order's messed up. I've seen people put the car in reverse, back up, push the other car out the way, go back to tell her, to the teller and tell them exactly how they messed up. Oh, Lord. And all that's on camera. If you want to see people get real about variation, you let that check be a little bit lower than last week. Oh. Okay. I'll leave that and I'll leave it. But with God, you ain't got to worry about that. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So what you read in the word of God is the physical account of what God did for people. And then you learn that they are as the same as us. Well, if God delivered Daniel, then I know he'll deliver me from no lions. If I know that he parted the Red Sea for Moses, I know he'll part that foolishness for me. But I must believe by faith. Because faith moves the hand of God. Paul also told the Philippians in another place of scripture. He says, whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report, if there's any virtue in it, and if there be any praise to God for it, think on these things. See, Paul was studying Moses, and he discovered how by faith now, Moses, when he was older, come to years, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. But rather, he chose to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Amen. 
Paul also saw how Moses esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures that were already in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. And how by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. You and I endure hardness because we know Christ is on the other side. Paul's heart was fully persuaded. That like Moses, I will not fear what man can do unto me. And would rather cast all that I have away for the explanation given in verse 10. He says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto death. If by any means I might attain, whatever it takes, I want to be part of the resurrection of the dead. In your walk in Christ, safeguarding your spirit may mean removing yourself from some people. Get away from them. It may mean removing yourself from false brothers and false sisters. How are you going to invite me to your church to fellowship with you and you run around here chasing these females? You run out here drinking with the boss. You know. What kind of doctrine are you studying? What kind of covering are you under? It makes me wonder. How are you going to do such a thing? And you scheming and plotting. What kind of word you reading? What kind of God you serving? Not everybody who says Lord, Lord will make it into the kingdom of God. You may have to remove yourselves from these people. It may mean a deeper level of sanctification where God continues to remove things out of your spirit. Safeguarding your spirit is synonymous with whatever it takes short of sinning. I'm going to make heaven my home. Safeguarding your spirit won't mean letting God speak on your behalf. And I know, I know, I know you may want to tell people some things for a long time. But let God speak on your behalf. Even when the words are on the tip of your tongue. You know how y'all do. You know what God... Mm. Then you got to go, you got to go into a hum. When you look at your... Mm, Jesus, yeah. Oh, Lord, yeah. They already think you're crazy, so just do it. Catch yourself. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Sometimes it means letting God speak on your behalf. That I may know him, safeguarding your spirit may mean not responding to cryptic emails. I already mentioned about emails, didn't I? The Bible says, let not your good be evil spoken of. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust to the day of judgment to be punished. Therefore, we continue to sanctify ourselves for the very reason Paul states in verse 12. He says, not as though I already attained. Either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Amen. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I actively do. I forget now those things which are behind me, and I'm reaching forth unto those things which are before me. I press toward the high 
mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if anything you are otherwise minded, God shall what? Reveal it even unto you. You and I press toward the mark of the high calling of God, regardless of people's foolishness, regardless of what the enemy is trying to do unto you. And you know the enemy is attacking you day in and day out. Y'all know he is. But you're pressing toward the high calling of God to come a little higher. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. The body of Christ has to speak out with one voice against the acts of abomination that this country and world are trying to force feed down our throat. Don't get twisted. And don't get it twisted. Homosexuality is an abomination unto God. God is against adultery, lust, and fornication. These are tactics against the holiness of God to destroy the fundamentals of holy matrimony. Someone do me a favor. Someone please find Malachi chapter 2. Please. We want to see what God says about broken up marriages. All right? When someone has it, please let me know. You have it? All right, we're going to read 13 to 16. Okay, can you do that for me? Uh huh. With weeping and with crying out. Yeah. So much that he regarded not the offering anymore. Uh huh. Or received it with good will at your hand. All right. Yep. Yet ye say, Wherefore, because the Lord has been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, yep. against whom thou hast dealt treacherously, yep. yet is she thy companion? And the wife of thy covenant. Uh huh. And did not he make one? Say, say one more time. And did not he make one? Okay, keep going. Yet have the residue of the spirit, and we are for one. Yeah. That he might seek a godly seed. Therefore, take heed to your spirit. Take heed to your what? Take heed oh. to, your spirit. to your spirit now. All right, last verse. For the Lord, the God of Israel, saith that he hated putting away. He does what? He hates putting away. That's another way of saying divorcement. Yes. Separation. Keep going now. I'm about to get real ignorant. <laughs> yeah. Therefore, take heed to your spirit. Twice now, God said it. That you deal not treacherously. The reason why God put a man and a woman together in holy matrimony is so that he can have some holy kids. And you have the audacity to come in my face? Tell me you were born that way? You done, you done, you done came to the wrong one. The devil is a liar. And the father of the earth. Now, if God just done told us, I have no place, no part of divorcement, how in the world are you going to try to tell me that it's okay for God to wink at your homosexual in the mess? And now you want to cut, slip, sliver, and tuck because you want to change. Oh, here we go now. You want to 
to change what God gave you between your legs? What kind of foolishness is that? I'm trying to safeguard my spirit, and you want me to address you by your identity? Yeah, you a woman, you a man, and you messed up in your mind. You messed up in your spirit. It's a foul spirit in the land. This is what had Lot outside the wall of the city, vex in his spirit. We ain't treating our wives right. Amen. We ain't treating our husbands right. The church ain't right. So now people are running to and fro throughout the world trying to find something to fill the void. This is why God says judgment must first begin in the house of God. How you gonna tell me? Ask me to marry you. How? And you know what God is saying. Amen. You know what God is saying. Amen. And now you mad at me. This is why I sit by myself sometimes in the park. Just me and the trees and the leaves looking and talking. Because nobody else wanna hear me. You just read it for yourself. See, with Malachi, it was more than just tithes and offerings they messed up in. The home was messed up. These men didn't care for their wives no more. Because it was one nag too much. One take off the trash too much. One don't pick up your shoes too much. I'm out of here. And he done told you. It's an abomination. And God says, I hate divorce. Why would God hate divorce? Because it's like spitting in God's face what he already set up way back in Genesis. That's why when the Bible says that uh, when Eve was about to conceive, he said, and the man knew his wife. You can't be having a homosexual relationship and try to produce children. You're a liar. Amen. You're a liar. Amen. Amen. Don't come to me. Don't come to me last week being Dorothy and next week being Daniel. Don't come to me with that drama. You don't get me fired up in here. Don't give me a... Well, you know, you need a, you need a, didn't God say forgive? Yeah. But he also told me to cry loud and spare not. That's all in the same Bible. Isn't it? The church, the children need to hear this. Because they hear it everywhere. Else. Every show now has some kind of homosexual relationship, homosexual child, lesbian. <laughs> Ain't that funny what happened last week? What you talking about? I don't know what you talking about. What was funny about that? Explain it to me. Explain it to me. We want to brush over this instead of staying put and really absorb the filthiness of what's happening in the world. And you know it's an abomination. You know it's filthiness. That's why they don't want to be around you, because they know what you stand for. You make them feel uncomfortable when you get around. They start fidgeting and moving around, find some other place to go. I'm telling you. God spoke clearly in Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. Just a little bit more ignorant, then I'll move on. The woman 
shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Okay. For all that do so are what? Abomination unto the Lord thy God. So, you can't tell me you loving God and you joining in some gay pride parade going to some gay wedding eating some gay birthday cake and then you took the word gay and twisted it. It's a foul spirit, church. Everywhere you turn, you got to take a five-time look to see who's coming your way. The people nip-tucking, pulling for, pulling for, come on, help me. I know for some of the older, maybe the elders, it's a bit too much, but our young people need to hear this. It's already coming in the schools. They're trying to force feed it to your children. Trying to put it on your homework. But then they want the people of God to just be quiet. Just be quiet a little while. No, no! Those practicing homosexuality and transvestite transformations need to be delivered in their heart and mind back to God. It brings confusion and filthiness into the homes and the hearts of the young children that they're raising. This is not hate speech. This is love speech. If you know someone's heading off a cliff and you don't say nothing to stop them, their blood is on your hand. This is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow your head with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ that you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul. And that not only you save us, O oh Lord, from our sins, but, O oh Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O oh Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O oh Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O oh Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.